All right, guys, I'm back with uh, yet another video of one of the Brittone amplifiers. This one is the 100 watt version uh, with the most appropriate covering that you could uh, dress one of these Soldano inspired amplifiers in. Anyways, uh, this video, I'm gonna be showing off the linear gain modification that Bruce has done to this as well as a secondary bright switch that triggers a different frequency cut slash boost, uh, whatever it does, there's, it's a different type of brightness that it can cut or boost. So I'm gonna be showing that off. Uh, let's see, go ahead and start off. I'm on the overdrive channel right now. So that's with the secondary bright turned uh, disengaged. Here it is engaged. So it's, it's a much, uh, much less of a impact on the sound than the Warren Haynes mod, which I'll turn this back on and I'll, let's see here. So it sounds like, and this is just me kind of playing around with it for the first time, uh, it sounds like this doesn't really have much of an impact until you add more overdrive to it. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do here. I'm gonna bring the volume back down because it is gonna go up some. Okay, yeah, you can hear, I can definitely tell a much bigger difference there versus when it was literally all the way down. So let's try the Haynes mod again. Oh yeah, okay. Let's keep on going with the gain a little bit. I feel like at this level of overdrive, the Haynes mod is too drastic of a cut. I mean, the treble is only halfway up and the presence is completely off at this point, so. So you can still compensate with the actual EQing knobs, but let's keep on going a little bit. Thank you. 
right now I have my JHS Klon. I'm gonna kick that on here. The volume is all the way up on it and the gain is all the way down. So it's set as a clean boost and the tone is right in the middle. So here it is, unboosted. And here it is with the Klon. back the volume down to three o'clock and the gain to nine o'clock. This is with it off. Again. the volume on the Klon down just a bit to noon and leave the gain where it is. Uh, I feel like I'm getting a little bit too much of a volume increase rather than just a overdrive increase, which I guess technically that's what it was set to be doing, so it was doing what it was supposed to. So anyways, let's uh, keep going a little bit more on that gain. <laughs> I bet what this thing could be really useful for is if you have speakers that are just a touch on the bright side. It would be good in just tweaking it just enough so that you roll off a tad bit of that really uh, top end, whereas the bright is a bit more heavy handed with how much it kills on the brights on the top end. <laughs>
Morgan. <laughs> And this is where I feel like it starts to taper off in terms of how much actual saturation you get. Between five and seven, you're pretty much topping out in terms of the saturation. Whereas when you keep going past you know, seven or so, it just kind of gets a little thicker. So I'll kind of show how that sounds. <laughs> Yeah, that's really, that's really sort of a very, very, very small reduction in the uppers, upper frequencies, like around 9 to 10 kilohertz, I would say, is about where it sounds like it's changing things. Whereas the bright, if you're looking at kind of like a bell curve, EQ, it's like it's, it's a wider uh, bell on a EQ where it would be kind of a wider range of frequencies that it cuts. So anyways, let's, um, I'm gonna go to drop tuning real quick. And also keep in mind, I'm using the Tokai for this. It's got PAF pickups, the uh, Brian kind of hot, that kind of heck signature Sheptone pickups. So they're not made for huge high gain sounds, but they do, they're really clear. So that's why I prefer them, but I can imagine with uh, some Alnico 5 or even some active pickups, I think that this would just be that much heavier, tighter, more brutal, any of those words that you want to use to describe it. So anyways. <laughs> Bye. 
can really tell that the microphones are getting just hammered when I raise this depth knob up. It's just such a massive low frequency that it brings in. Uh, I guess especially with that Splon cabinet that they they start to just really get crushed with the with the low end from that depth control. Let me see if I can. We'll see if the room audio changes a whole lot with it. <laughs> This is going to be crazy loud in terms of just noise. Uh, I've got the decimator G string going, so it's killing everything right now, but here it goes. <laughs> clean stuff here at the very end i've got my full gig pedal board in the loop right now so i'm going to show off uh, hardwire reverb is on here comes the corona chorus <laughs> Flashback revert, uh, delay. Thank you. 
that my microphones are freaking out with that big bottom in there. Hop over to the crunch real quick. So I guess it's only for the overdrive channel. Okay. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the 100 watt Brittone SLO Plus. This one, um, I think it's striking the right balance of adding more abilities to tweak the overdrive voicing and just giving more control over the voice of the overdrive channel without messing with that sound that it's supposed to make, if that makes sense. Uh, the core voice that has made the Soldanos such popular amps, it's still there, but you just have a couple of more options to fine tune the sound, the level of gain, uh, the top end, uh, it, it's uh, it, it's really a, gr a a good change. It's not overwhelming in terms of just throwing all kinds of options at you, where you spend more time tweaking it than playing it. Which I've had that problem with several of my amps in the past. So keeping it simple, I'm always a big fan of that. But giving you just the right options to change things in meaningful ways, uh, there's a there's a good balance, and I think that. At this point, this amp with these changes made to it, I think that it has struck a very good balance between keeping it simple and familiar, but giving you just enough options to tweak it in very slight but meaningful ways. Anyways, I will try to get a couple more videos of this thing, and uh, just stay tuned. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions or comments about the amp for Bruce, just uh, throw them down in the comments. He, uh, he sees them, and he's pretty quick to answer and very, uh, very informative. So anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.